So the first thing we're going to look at is how to import a second video into Fusion when we are already working with an existing video. So the first thing we're going to do is to bring our video clip uh, to the Fusion page. Now to get a second video clip, a second video into the node area, we need to make sure that we go to Media Pool tab on top and then select whichever video we want to bring to the node editing area. And you will see that by simply drag and dropping it. Now the second video has become uh, media in two, uh, indicating that it's now the second video in the node area. And I'm going to do a quick merge uh, in this case, just for the sake of demonstration, so that our second video now is the foreground and our first video is now the background. Now, the second video I want to quickly show you that is much shorter in terms of duration compared to the first video, about half the size of uh, compared to the original video. So if we look at the timeline here, just to verify that we are, we're, this is working properly, you will see that about halfway through our second video is no longer the foreground and it defaults to the first video. So this is just a very quick look at how to import second video into Fusion. Now we're gonna look at how to manipulate uh, the second video once it's on the Fusion page. In particular, we're going to look at how to change the video position in the timeline and also the length of our second video. To do that, uh, we're going to select the media into node first. And we're going to look at three important parameters today. Uh, global in and out, trim, and host first frame, and the whole last frame. Now, global in and out, uh, this is a very important parameter. Um, the first thing uh, global in and out tells us is the location of our second video relative to the timeline. So it tells us that it starts at zero frame, so it, starts, it tells us it starts at the very beginning of the timeline and ends at 424th frame. So if we come to the timeline and we go to 424th frame, you will see the last frame of our second video. And after that, you will see that it now defaults to our original video. So that's the first thing it tells us is the location of our second video. Another thing you can do with Global in and out is change the location, change the position of the second video. So by simply moving the slider, uh, the global in and out slider uh, to a little bit over to the right, we now have effectively moved our second video uh, to a different uh, location in the timeline. So you see that now it starts at a much later time and it ends also at a much later, uh, much later point in, in the timeline. So this is a very quick, quick way to move uh, your second video around. We can also, by changing the in and out point of the slider, uh, effectively trim the second video and therefore changing the duration of our second video. So by now, if I move the in point to the right, where we start to trim our second video starting at the beginning. And if we go ahead right now and bring the out point to the left, we start to trim the, our uh, second video starting at the end. So now you can see that we have a much shorter clip. We only have about 110 frames in total compared to the original 425. And now combined with, combine this with, uh, you know, moving the slider uh, to, uh, so that we change the location of uh, our uh, second video, you can effectively perform these two things uh, with just using just the global in and out parameter. So, this is a very powerful parameter uh, to, to understand and to remember, and it will help you uh, a lot uh, with uh, you know, manipulating, uh, uh, just, just the global ANSL parameter itself will help you a lot with just manipulating uh, your uh, second video. So now we're going to look at the trim parameter and how that relates to global ANL. Trim parameter itself uh, allows us to trim our, uh, our second video therefore changing also the duration, the length of the second video. Uh, it's very much kind of like what we saw earlier uh, with global in and out. But if we just use trim parameter, you will see that it, it works a little bit differently. So first of all, trim parameter also tells us the in and out point, the, the location of our second video. But if we start right now, bring our, uh, our in point over to the right, 
you will notice that yes, we are trimming uh, starting from the beginning of the video, but the location, the begin starting location of our second video is not changing. However, what it does change is the ending point of our second video. So now it's a much shorter video. It ends much, much earlier compared to the original uh, full footage. The same thing will also happen if we start to trim using the out point. So if we bring the out point over to the left, you will see that now we, uh, we have a much shorter video clip. And, but also the starting position of our second video is not changing. Uh, we're only moving the ending point over uh, a little bit over uh, to, to the left. Uh, as you can see under the global in and out uh, parameter. So this is something very important to understand the, the relationship between trim and global in and out. This will, uh, this could come in handy uh, in your video editing assignment. Okay, the last parameter we're going to look at is hold first and hold last frame. This may not come in ha handy as often, uh, but it is an important parameter to know nonetheless. So now if we move to the very last frame of our second video, 424th frame, you will now notice that right after that last, last frame, it defaults right back to our second frame. But if we go ahead right now and adjust the parameters under hold last frame, now we're telling, uh, telling our, uh, the Fusion to freeze, essentially freeze frame the last frame for about uh, 60, uh, 60 something frames. So you will see that now if we move, once we passed our last frame, 424th frame, you now see, all you see is just the freeze frame of the last frame. So again, this doesn't, may not come in handy as often, but this is a very important parameter to know uh, nonetheless. To wrap up the video, I want to touch on a special case when it comes to moving our second video around in the timeline. Now we saw that earlier we can do so by change, by dragging the slider under global in and out uh, to a different, we can easily uh, move our second video to a different point in the timeline. Uh, this is a very quick way to do so, but it may not be very precise. You can be very precise about where you want the second video to be by changing the in and out point individually. So now, I'm going to move the out point all the way to the very last frame of, uh, you know, in the timeline. And, but now you also notice that hold last frame has been adjusted automatically as well. So this is kind of weird, but don't worry about it. We're gonna come back to this uh, later on. So even if you see freeze frames at this point, don't worry too much. Uh, we're going to come back, this, come back to this uh, very soon. Uh, we were going to bring back the entire footage Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do is to change the in point as well. The idea is that we want to have 425 frames in total. So as if that we still have the original footage, but you also notice the trim parameter has been adjusted too automatically. So what do we need to do? Now, the first thing we need to do is to reset whole last frame. And then all we need to do is just to bring the trim parameter all, uh, parameter all the way, the in point on the trim parameter all the way to the beginning. So now we have brought back the original footage while making sure that it is located at the very last part uh, in the timeline. So this is a special case you may run into if you want to adjust in and out point uh, of the, your second video individually. Uh, again, the, uh, the, the solution to this really hinges on your understanding of the three parameters, what they do and the relationship between them. So I uh, hope this helps guys and uh, I will see you in the next video.